I'm not sure, actually. I don't know what you I said the same thing, Mark. You know, <laughs> that's the first rule of, of any speech. Don't tell them you're not prepared or you don't know anything. <laughs> Unfortunately, or of course, yeah, I've, I've been around a lot. And the first, um, I started with, on this job in 1991, and uh, we still do. But we we had work. We'd always have work events, group work events within our, within our division, and call them SWATs. And I, way back then, SWAT was a TV show, and it was kind of about um, tactical police groups or whatever that go out and do neat stuff, bad stuff, they had, they had special groups, kind of like the Navy SEALs or something, but anyway, we called them sw SWATs, and uh, the first SWAT I had back in, in January 92, when we started, was here, and it was in January, and it rent, it snowed the night, we came, we stayed in Waterloo overnight, and so we woke up in the snow, like, we can't go all on top of Fultz and cut and spray or whatever, because uh, it's going to be slippery and snow on the ground and everything so um we end up you know going the doing that work the, the next day we had a regional meeting the first day and then we came and did some work so i'm from central illinois and honestly i, I lived a pretty sheltered life i didn't get out so i you know this part of the world i mean this is like a mountain there's no question <laughs> this is a mountain and i really hadn't had a lot of experience with this part of the state and everything and so so just to Get, be here the first time and come here as part of a job. I mean, gosh, you, it doesn't get any better. Um, and another just th thing, a story was, um, and it must have been around that time, Ed Anderson was the district biologist at that time. Um, he was here just before um, Scott Ballard. Um, Ed was from up in Northwest Illinois and he was able to take it to the district up there. Um, Ed. Ed was in good physical shape, and we'd get here to help with the burn. And you know, back then, everything was done with hand stuff. You know, we had backpack, water packs. Um, we'd fill them up and go up the top of the hill to. Uh, and back then, we were just we just burned the prairies, um, and some of us still do that. But that's you know, and everything was hauled up the hill, you know, on foot. And we'd get here, and Ed would already have all the water packs up on the on the hill for us. I mean, that was the kind of standards I had. We had to live up to, and, and uh, man was like, "Wow, this guy is good." And uh, you know, never could replicate that that kind of energy. And, and but Phil might argue with me, man. I so being fortunate to to help on a lot of things here over the years, and uh, I don't think there's ever been a burn here where it wasn't a long day. It was driving home at 10, 11 o'clock midnight you know it's just it's just the nature of the beast when you're up on this kind in this kind of community and on the bluffs and it's you know it's it's a forced it's a timber dominated landscape and so it's just inherently you've got lots of things to deal with um anytime you do fire here and that's you either got to love it or hate it and so you know we were us heritage biologists are pretty you know thick-headed and you know not that smart so um <laughs> But anyway, you, um, if you, you know, being down at the pavilion and looking up the bluff, looking up here or looking at an aerial photo, whatever, it's like, um, what's the dominant feature here? What's, what's the main, you know, natural community? Well, it's, it's forest, it's woodland, it's timber, whatever we want to call it. So, um, why are we talking about prairie, hill prairie so much? You know, the main feature here is woods. Um, uh, what's wrong with us? And of course, from a natural heritage division, you know, um, there's a forestry division that kind of deals with that wood stuff. I mean, we were always like, what do you, we don't need to, what do we do in that stuff? We, you know, we, we kind of kept to the prairies, kept to the wetlands, kept to the rare natural communities, you know, as heritage folks. Um, and then starting out when you're just burning the prairies and you got all this other around you and to deal with that, um, it really didn't take long for us to figure out and we got to expand out these units simply for safety, you know, to do those burns. Um, but you had all this other stuff that, that really needed treatment, especially in places where you, uh, you had a lot of invasive species, you know, competition and 
and things, you know, especially the bush honeysuckles and all that. So, um, you know, it didn't take us long to realize we had to really expand out our units for, for a bunch of reasons. Um, but also at that same time, um, there really became this notion, this differentiation between a, for, a typical forest or a conventional forest versus this thing we call a woodland. Um, and folks, our neighbors to the west, uh, really had a lot to do with that. Paul Nelson was with the Natural Areas Inventory. He actually worked for the Department of Natural Resources, which is the state parks side of their conservation over there. And, and uh, he did a lot with kind of describing what this woodland was. And, and uh, of course, you know, us working in this field, all these plant communities are a continuum from, from that hill prairie out there to you know, if you have savanna, if you have the savanna, you got this woodland stuff, whatever that is, and then it uh, grades into to a uh, um, forest. But then you can add in, well, we got these glades out here in this place, and you, well, we got a barren, so it, it can really get complicated, which is what's all the fun about natural heritage uh, is is defining and describing all this stuff. But um, through our Illinois Natural Areas Inventory, um, they really made an effort to describe what this woodland is. John, Dr. John Teff with the Natural History Survey um, was our main lead on describing and, and so through about 2010, we started working on it, you know, before that, but um, really putting pen to paper and, and describing what, what a woodland is. And so you guys have walked through it on this ridge top and you see it around you, but the difference is a couple things are, it's really a two tiered structure of, of woodland, meaning you got this, tree you got a canopy and then you got this this ground floor and you really don't have anything in between versus you know in forests you'll have this mid canopy as we kind of see behind us you'll have or a sub canopy mid canopy you got small trees of the adult trees above you um, but with woodland it's really just a two-tiered system um, and then also generally woodlands are have less canopy coverage um, most most describers, you know, say 50% to 80 plus percent canopy coverage of of uh, woodlands versus true forest or typical forest is generally all 80 to 90 percent canopy coverage. Um, woodlands, like most of our our uh, upland forests in the state, are dominated by oak oak trees in so woodlands really are oaks, oaks, oaks. It's, it's white oaks, black oaks, post oaks, chinkapin oaks, rock chestnut oak. You get burr oaks up in northern Illinois more. Um, and so that leads to the other really key factor with woodland is, is fire. And uh, our oaks are very uh, tolerant of fire, have many physiological um, ways to, to uh, tolerate fire, thick bark, um, heal their wounds, um, re-sprout easy. Um, so they're highly adapted to, to fire. And so really to go find a woodland, see a woodland, manage for a woodland, you're going to use frequent fire. And what frequent means, that's up to the managers and kind of up to, you know, objectives you have on the ground. But um, anywhere from annually to every two to three to four or five years, um, but I think we're finding now in more recent years and, and working on these sites that guys should go much longer than a couple of years in between fires. Um, you know, you know, it starts to you start to not see it doesn't look like what you'd like it to see or, or feel. And so um, again, frequent fires, generally low intensity fires, um, but again, that frequent fire um, has a key role in uh, maintaining that ground flora. Um, and the difference with um, the flora is that fine fuels and, and, and creating or, or um, enhancing that, those cool season grasses and uh, where'd it go? Wild senna, um, wild rye, bent grasses, Hubbard oak grass, sea oats. Um, so lots of sedges, different characters, lots of sedges. Um, so all that fine fuel at the ground flora um, is really that that layer of fuel that helps you carry fires through the woods then along with that 
those oak leaves, as we all know, that um, stay um, fluffy, um, don't get close to the soil, um, really help carry a fire. So oak leaves, and then all these fine fuels with the grass, cool season grasses, sedges, and then all the different um, herbs or forbs. And so um, you'll you'll find the same some of the same forbs out in the prairie or particularly in the savannas that you will find here in the woodland again depending on how how open the canopy is um, shooting stars wild hyacinth um, purple comb flower yellow pepernel um, even like lead plant tall anemone lots of different forbs that you know again you could you could see out on the prairie that are good indicators to us that um, this is a woodland versus versus a, a forest. So that um, ground flora, the diversity, and then that oak dominated um, community is really keys for the woodland. The other, other thing is, is aspect and location. And so on a ridge top like this, south and west facing slopes is where we're gonna focus on um, where we would say, okay, I think it's a good reason to manage for woodland in this. You got full 500 acres, whatever here at Fultz, you're gonna pick these places where you're gonna use your fire on the prairie to, to run through the woods. And this is totally the right place to be doing this on this, this ridge top and on this south and west facing slope. And, and again, proximity to your, your open prairie condition. Um, so woodlands are more found in these drier, drier aspects, drier parts of, of rolling topography and in these unglaciated parts of the state like, like we're in here. Um, depth of soil has something to do with it too. You know, again, those drier places where that structure, that dry woodland structure um, was favored. Um, ha having those shallower soils, you know, maybe more bedrock. You're also, that's going to be the place as a manager to pick where I'm going to try to manage more for woodland. Um, though you get here, you can start getting into glade versus, um, and, and standing on this ridge, you got you got plenty of soil. So it's this would be more of a dry mesic woodland um, versus you'd get more on this steep slope. It'd be more just of a dry woodland versus a dry mesic here up on, on you got more soils, more soil depth here. Um, so really nice plant diversity um, with uh, Tick tree foils, the desmodiums, lots of des different desmodiums. You got native lespedezas also. So you got um, some different legumes, you know, in these woodland ground flora that, that's attractive for a, a variety of wildlife, you know, for things like wild turkeys and even, even bob whites if it's open enough. You got, you got that good food resources from, from those different plants. And of course, with the more open condition, it's good, you know, breed rearing and so nesting for turkeys as well. Another kind of characteristic animals you would maybe see in woodlands are some of the different herbs like the the ground skinks might be here, um, five line skinks, fence lizards, um, broadhead skinks, you know, like that little more open conditions on the ground. Um, and, you know, birds like summer tanager, uh, peewees, flycatchers, redhead woodpeckers that like this more open condition where they're catching they're catching things in the air, particularly with peewees and flycatchers, but but even some of these indigo bunnies everywhere. But you know they like these woodlands next to these hill prairies. Um, just that open aspect where they can uh, they can move around in the canopy too. Um, they they just like those kind of conditions. So um, you know a lot of those plants and animals can be found you know in savanna, even on the edges of the prairie. You might even find them in open forest, um, but but there are some of those that are really kind of characteristic of these these woodland um, plant communities. Again, it's kind of a new um, it's a new class of, of community forest. Um, but I think historically, woodland was really widespread. You know, when you think about how much prairie there was in the state, and then how much savanna. Um, really, true forest was probably less less common in woodland was probably really more what what we had in, in this big uh, tall grass prairie area of, of Illinois and parts of Missouri and, and Iowa. And so 
places in you know Missouri, Arkansas. Um, there's really been a big push with toward this woodland management on Forest Service ground, uh, you know, state state wildlife areas and so forth. Um, and then you get out down south in the Long Longleaf Pine Forest, um, Savannah communities, woodlands where um, again that same similar structure they're managing for in a really big way. Um, so, so I think yeah, there's going to be continued increase in, in woodland rest, management restoration and, and uh, I visit with a lot of my colleagues and trying to you know have them think about what sites in their in their district would they they really think about well that that's a good place to manage for woodland and, and almost in, invariably every one of them say yeah I got places where I'd like to do that and I I just we don't have the time or it's just it's just one of those lower on the priority list um, but a lot of our sites um, have a lot of a lot of reasons um, we could do more woodland management. Though a lot of them are, you know, past land use has has a huge effect on the quality of sites, um, what's there to work with. Um, so having those indicator plants that that tree, sh those oak that oak dominate those oak stands um, re really guide you toward toward. How much you can do where you should do it, um, but they made huge differences here on this site, and uh, I really congratulate them for you know what they've been able to do here. It's and it's not just a fire. Obviously, you know you're you're taking trees out, and so um, right behind Phil there, there's a sugar maple, and so in the more um, heavier soils, you know a little more mesic sites, you know my Pier Marquette up the road, lots of sugar maple. So that's that becomes kind of a, you know, one where I would take out, um, you know, some of the ash, hackberries is one, some elms, cherry like that. We're not saying some of these trees are bad. Of course, you have, you want tree diversity on your site. You know, tree diversity is important, um, but succession has occurred. As, if you can look at it, old aerial photos from, from not then to today, uh, we just, the densification, you know, the amount of trees, the amount of basal area, if you will, on these sites, is hugely different than what it was, you know, in historic times, and and so it, it really, you know, it's part art, part science of deciding where you take out, what you take out. Um, but we have, you know, some examples and models to go on to try to try to help us. But working with a lot of different colleagues make makes a big difference on helping us make make the right decisions. I know this is a woodland desmodium. Do you know which species it is? <laughs> Probably somebody smarter than me would know, but uh, there's round leaf, there's bracked, there's pointed. Those are those are kind of the three I was looking at in my notes last night that are you know, really kind of characteristic and typical of our, our woods. The round leaf is, you'll see it almost everywhere. It's, it's pretty common, but the bracked and the pointed were, were more more typical and less common. But yeah, yeah there's they definitely have just this one whirl of leaves, and then there's a single stalk, and then their seeds don't have anywhere near the Velcro of, yeah. of the prairie ones, which are really yeah. annoying. Yeah, it kind of looks like brown leaf, but we need a real buttons. All right, do we have any other questions for Mr. Phipps? 